he died and he resurrected and he is still alive so that's the reason we can we can say that the source is from jesus christ he was and he is and he is to come amen so now uh, that is the end of that uh, study of uh, the church of smyrna now we are going to the uh, third church the third church is the church at pergamum the church at pergamum the church at pergamum or you can call it as a pergamos the church at pergamos uh, that is from chapter 2 verses uh, 12 through 17 chapter 2 verses 12 through 17 okay so uh, okay if you if you are i mean yeah you can you can finish the writing that i mean points it is coming there the the compromising church and the pergamos is the greek and uh, pergamon is the latin and per- pergamon also is known as Okay, now, uh, who can say what was the uh, most important speciality of uh, uh, Ephesus Church and the Smyrna Church? One of the one of the most important speciality of uh, the Ephesus Church and the Smyrna Church. Who is ready to say that? We already covered that portions, no? So, who can say that? you can unmute and say yeah the fishes was a great harbor mhm is it about the location or about the church uh, any any anything about a, a most important speciality that uh, uh, speaks about the, that church the fishes church and the smyrna church it was established <laughs> yeah Yeah, about the establishment you are talking yeah. yes beautiful city all right yeah or apostle paul was directly involved with both the churches yes <clears throat> yeah same time let me tell you maybe uh, uh, one point from one church you know ephesus church you know it is known as the loveless church or they left their first love they left their first love a eh? or you can call that church as a loveless church okay they lost or they left their first love okay and about smyrna church another thing about the smyrna church it is the most persecuted church and it is a it is a church without fault no fault is mentioned about the smyrna church no weak points about smyrna church okay but at the same time it is the most persecuted church okay now but about pergamos church pergamos church you know uh, this is a church which is a compromising church you can say that this is a compromising church the pergamos church is a compromising church the first church was a i mean loveless church or a they left their first love smyrna church was most persecuted church and without fault and uh, pergamos church is a compromising church now you already wrote that points pergamos is the is the greek word uh, and pergamum is the latin translation and it is also is known as the, the pergamon pergamon okay so everything the three names are same but you can you can i mean call it as a pergamos or you can call it as a pergamum or pergamon is also is okay and i will be using most of the time pergamos okay so pergamos is the greek word and pergamum is the latin 
and you can use bergamot also it is also known as like that so we will go to the uh, the next thing that the word bergamot is derived from two greek words okay the word bergamot is derived from two greek words okay what is that the per okay what is that per is the first word the second word is gamos the second word is gamos so the per means deviation or unholy deviation or unholy gamos is wedding or matrimony wedding or matrimony so the word pergamum is derived from two greek words the first one is per which means deviation or unholy and the second word is gamos which means wedding or matrimony so the pergamum means or pergamos means unholy wedding or unholy relationship unholy wedding or unholy relationship and uh, uh, later we will see the uh, connection of the uh, meaning of this name and uh, the situation of the pergamos church so the reason that i told you that uh, this is the meaning of this uh, the reason is you know uh, later we will be i mean going through the messages to the church then we will understand the Uh, more uh, i mean deeply about uh, those points because you know uh, there is a connection with uh, the meaning of the uh, uh, meaning of this name and uh, the situation of the uh, pergamos church so that's the reason i gave you what is the meaning of uh, uh, this uh, i mean uh, name called pergamos or pergamum or pergamon okay now we will we will go to the uh, point number a that is the city where the church is located the city where the church is located that is the point number a so we are trying to look into the each points about uh, the city and the messages of the churches and the first point is the church the city where the church is located i will give you the picture of uh, uh, the city of uh, pergamos now this is the this is the ancient city of uh, pergamum this is the ancient city of uh, uh, pergamum now we will go to the uh, uh, points about uh, i mean what are the specialities and what are the importance of that city so we are going to look into that uh, the first one is the city of uh, pergamum is the combination of two cities i mean the city of pergamum is a combination of two cities like uh, one on a hill and the other on towards the downward or like a valley like a valley so there are two cities uh, it's it's, it's a, i mean the city of pergamum is a combination of two cities that means one on a hill so one city is on a hill and the other one uh, is towards the downward or just like a valley Uh, you can see that uh, in the picture the structure of the city the structure of the city is there in the picture you know one is i mean on the hill and the the the, the another one is downward okay that means that, that is a, just, just like a valley okay so two combination of two cities and also pergamum was the capital of roman province of asia pergamum was the capital of roman province of asia Pergamum was the capital of Roman province of Asia, and also it was a famous city of Asia Minor. It was a famous city of Asia Minor. The another thing is, city was the residence of governor. City was the residence of governor. That means the governors had the, I mean, uh, they were, I mean, coming there and they were staying in the city. when there is a governor the governor should stay in the city of i mean pergamos so that was the system and also the governor had the had the authority to put people to the death the governor had the authority to 
uh, put the I mean people to the death, and he had the power of the sword, which is that is written there. He had the power of the sword. That means he had the authority. The governor had the authority to put the people for the death and to kill the people, to kill the people, to destroy the people, and that was the authority that governor was having. And that is why you know in uh, in chapter two verse twelve. Revelation chapter 2, verse 12, we read like this. And to the angel of the church in Pergamum, right? The one who has the sharp two-edged sword saying this. That means Jesus reminds them that Jesus has, or he has the more powerful sword than the governor has. That means the governor is having a power. The governor is having an authority. And he is having the power of the sword, power of the sword to kill the people or the kill, to kill the Christians. But here in chapter 2, verse 12, Jesus is reminding the church and the people that Jesus is having more powerful sword in his hands than the power of the governor. And Christ has the sword with two edges. Christ has the sword with two edges, and he has the final authority over both death and the life. He has the final authority over the death and the life. And Christ not only has the power to condemn the people to eternal death, but also he has the power to give them the eternal life. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know, most of the time the people are thinking that, okay, I mean, Jesus Christ is having the power to condemn the people to the eternal death. You know, that means, I mean, uh, I mean uh, Jesus is, I mean, sending all the people to the, uh, to the eternal death. No, both are there. You know, Jesus has the authority. Jesus has the power. Jesus has the authority to just condemn the people to the eternal death also has the power to give the eternal life. I mean, so that is, that is very interesting. So that's the reason that, I mean, uh, John and also Jesus also is, I mean, appreciating and uh, Jesus is just reminding those people that you have to be very firm because, uh, I mean, Jesus has the power. Jesus has the authority, even though the governor also is having the authority. And the other thing is uh, uh, there were mainly four temples of idol worship. Mainly there were four temples of idol worship. You know, uh, on this hill, on this hill, you know, I told you uh, the city is the combination of two cities, two cities. The two small cities. Okay, so on the hill there is a city. In that hill itself, there was four temples. Four temples. It was the I mean the, the temples of idol worship. Okay, for example, it is there the temple of uh, uh, Zeus, uh, Zeus God. Okay, and the next one is this I mean temple of the uh, Asclepius, uh, Asclepius God, and the uh, third temple uh, is. Uh, the temple of uh, uh, Dionysus, Dionysus, and the fourth one is the temple of Athena. Fourth one is the temple of Athena. These are the main four temples of uh, idol worship, which was, uh, I mean, happening in this uh, city. And again, there was a famous hospital. There was a famous hospital at the down city of Pergamos. Okay, so uh, the, the temples are in the hillside and the, the, the hill city and the, the hospital is in the down city of Pergamos. Yeah? And uh, Roman emperors used to, to come there for the treatment. You know, this is a famous hospital there in the down city of the Pergamos. And usually the Roman emperors were getting the treatment from that hospital. And uh, there are some more uh, interesting thing about uh, uh, this uh, uh, hospital, you know, and this hospital was connected to the temple of Pergamum God, known as the, as the temple of Asclepius, the temple of Asclepius, okay? So he was the, known as the God of healing. This God Asclepius is known as the God of healing, God of healing. And um, uh, the reason is, you know, when the people are coming there, these are, these are the, I mean, uh, pictures you can, you can see there. Uh, 
um, and here's the, here is the picture of uh, uh, Asclepius standing with a rod, standing with a rod wrapped by a snake. The, the, that, that, I mean, uh, a picture, which one I think, uh, I mean, in, in, the, in the screen, that is the second one. Okay. The picture of the, I mean, uh, this god uh, Asclepius standing with a rod wrapped, I mean, by a snake, wrapped by a snake. And the another one is, uh, there is a picture of a snake wrapped around a rod in a spiral shape, in a spiral shape. That is the second one. So actually, it is written there. It is written in the in the screen. The st second picture is a snake wrapped around the rod in a spiral shape. So these are the pictures related to this god. Okay, and uh, you know, uh, even today, uh, there are many uh, medical institutions and organizations. Uh, they are using the same emblem, the same emblem of that. Uh, I mean, rod and the snake uh, in the screen. Uh, they are using that emblem or, or that image uh, even now nowadays also to show the effectiveness of the uh, medical treatment. You know, when, they, when, they, when they give that emblem uh, for their organization or medical institution, even today also, they are saying that, okay, our treatment is more effective uh, because of the help of this God. Okay, so that is what they are doing in the city. Uh, uh, because of this reason, I mean, this city is also known as the city of serpent. This, this city is also known as the city of serpent, city of serpent. You know, uh, because, you know, the history says that uh, there were many, I mean, serpents and snakes were just, I mean, uh, wandering there. And uh, whenever the people are uh, coming for the uh, treatment, they just lay down in that temple or the near the temple. And these snakes will, I mean, cross them and when they cross, when the snakes are crossing them, then these people get healing. So this is the this is the I mean uh, myth that they are they are believing in, in in that area. So that's the reason that we can call that city as a city of serpent, city of serpent. So uh, we will go to the I mean biblical portion about uh, uh, what the Bible says about the serpent, what the Bible says about the, I mean uh, uh, about the serpent. In Bible, the Satan is compared with the serpent in many places. In Bible itself, there are many places, I mean, that says that Satan is compared with the serpent, with the serpent. You just remember that in, in this, uh, when, I mean, uh, God is giving the messages to uh, the, the, the church at Bergamos, I mean, it says that, you know, you have something there, you have something there means there is there is a throne. There is a there is, there is a throne of uh, Satan in that place. Okay, so we have to think about you know that city was filled with the satanic worship. The city was filled with with uh, the satanic worship and the serpent worship. You know they were worshiping serpent. They were worshiping this god. Okay, so that's the reason we can say that Satan is compared in the Bible also as a serpent. For example, Genesis chapter uh, uh, 3, verse 1 to 5, and 2 Corinthians chapter uh, uh, 11, verse 3, and Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, and Revelation chapter 20, verse 2. These are the four Bible verses that uh, you can see that, uh, I mean, Satan is compared with the serpent. Okay, so there is no time to explain all those things. It is very clear through, I mean, uh, getting those verses. Amen. And again, the next uh, uh, speciality of uh, the city is it was a famous city for the education. Famous city for the education. The city of Pergamos was a famous city for education. And also, this city of Pergamum or Pergamos is located 45 miles away from the city of Smyrna. So last class we were studying about the city of Smyrna and also the city, uh, the, the church at Smyrna. Now you can see that this, the city of Pergamum is located 45 miles away from the city of Smyrna. And also 
there was a sec the, the, that is the place or the city is the place that the second biggest library of the world was there the second biggest library of the world this is the picture of uh, the second biggest library of the world second biggest library of the world now this is in this situation but uh, it was a, it was a building on those days now it is already demolished and destroyed. In this situation, it is like this. And uh, this is the ancient library, okay? So this is the picture of the ancient library of that place. And also the another, I mean, uh, interesting thing is, it is believed that the Greek god Zeus, Greek god Zeus born in Pergamos. The Greek god Zeus born in Pergamos. The people believe that. And uh, you can see a well-known temple of Zeus God in that city. The well-known temple of Zeus God in that city. You will get the picture of that. I mean, a uh, temple. That means well-known temple of Zeus God. This is the, this is the, picture of Zeus God, Zeus God. And we will think about a few more things about that picture. Let that picture be there. You can see there something uh, special, you know, near the temple, you can see something like a huge throne, huge throne with a huge image. Can you see that? With a, a, a particular place is there, you know, people are standing there in that picture. You can see there, you know, there is a, there is a, there is a, I mean, huge throne is there, huge throne is there uh, with a, with a huge image, with a huge image. Okay. And uh, uh, you can see in the picture of the temple at the center of that throne, the fire burns and smoke comes up from there. Can you see that? You know, the fire burns and smoke comes up from that particular place, from that particular place. But you know there there is a, there is a particular place where the people are standing there in that in that picture you can see that that shows that shows the influence of satanic powers were prominent in that city in those days you know there were idol worship and uh, burning and fire comes and it was burning and smoke comes there and uh, always they were having the sacrifices in that particular place and uh, that sacrifices were uh, mainly for, I mean, uh, uh, pleasing the Zeus God. Zeus God was a satan, satanic worshiper, I mean, center of that city. And the people were coming there and they were offering many things and they were doing the worship there. And they were, I mean, always, I mean, 24 hours that, I mean, fire is burning and the smoke is coming. So that was a kind of, I mean, satanic influence and satanic worship, you know, uh, the, the reason that I told you about uh, this point, about the city and about the temple of the seers is uh, in, in I mean, Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. Revelation chapter 2, verse 13. It says that, I know where you dwell. We will read that verse. I know where you dwell. Where Satan's throne is. Where Satan's throne is. Okay, so when... Jesus is speaking about the church at Pergamos. I mean, he says that, I know where you dwell, where Satan's throne is there. The throne of Satan is there in the city. This is, I mean, about this only, Jesus is speaking about that. You know, this is, he say that, okay, I know that you are staying in the midst of the throne of Satan. There is a throne of Satan in your city, in your city. So about that, I mean, says that, okay, this may be the, 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 the temple of, uh, I mean, God sees and their sacrifice and their worship and satanic influence. About that only, I mean, God is speaking in chapter 2, verse 30. I mean, so that is the, that is, these are the explanations and these are the specialities of uh, the, the, the city of Pergamos, the city of Pergamos. Now, we will go to the point number B, point number B. That is the establishment of the church at Pergamon. 
the establishment of church at Pergamum. The establishment of church at Pergamum. Uh, okay, anybody can uh, read that Acts chapter 19, verse 10. Acts chapter 19, verse 10. Who is this, ready for that? Yeah. This continued for two years so that all residents of Asia heard the word of the Lord, both Jews and Greeks. Yes, okay. So about the establishment of the church at Pergamum, there is nothing mentioned uh, about the founder of the church at Pergamos. Okay, there is nothing mentioned in the Bible about uh, who planted or who founded the uh, church at Pergamum. But in Acts chapter 19, verse 10, we see that Paul preached the gospel in Ephesus. Paul preached the gospel in Ephesus and the nearest, nearest places also. Okay, So Paul was preaching the gospel in Ephesus and also to the nearest places of Ephesus. So it is believed that Paul might be the founder of this church. Paul might be the founder of this church. Amen. So that is what we understand from the history and from this uh, verse, Acts chapter 19, verse 10. Now we will go to the C point, the messages to the church at Pergamon. The messages to the church at Pergamon. The messages to the church at Pergamon. So regarding the Messages to the church at Pergamum, messages to the church at Pergamum, there are many things. Okay, appreciation are, appreciations are there, warnings are there, then uh, weak points are there, then reward and promise are there. So all these things are there. Now we are going to look into the point number A, appreciations. Appreciations. That is chapter 2, verse 13. Chapter 2, verse 13. Appreciation. Only one verse is there about the appreciation. Yeah, anybody can read that verse. 13. Who is reading? 213. I know where you dwell, where my Satan throne is, yet you hold fast my name, and you do not deny my faith, even in the days of Antipas, my faithful witness who was killed among you where Satan dwells. Okay. So the first one is, you know, in, in that particular verse, the first appreciation is, I know where you dwell. I know where you dwell. I know where you dwell. That is the first appreciation. Especially, there is a, I mean, it is written there, there is the throne of Satan. There is a throne of Satan. That means the place is filled with the satanic temple and the worship. Okay. So about that, God says that I know where you dwell. I know where you dwell. And there is the throne of Satan. There is a throne of Satan. You are living or you are dwelling in a place where there is a throne of Satan. So that place is filled with the, the satanic temple and worship. So that is the first thing that God is telling them that I know where you dwell. The second one, the second one is I know you hold fast my name. I know you hold fast my name. That is the second appreciation. That is the second appreciation. Here in this uh, second appreciation, God is appreciating them and saying, even though you are going through many persecutions, even though you're going through many persecutions and, uh, uh, and, the, and, and the government is insisting you for the idol worship and Caesar worship, you know, in those days, I mean, the government was uh, insisting uh, the Christians and other people to worship the, I mean, uh, uh, to worship the Caesar, Caesar, okay? So for the Caesar worship, and also for the idol worship. 
and god says that even in the midst of that persecution you are holding fast my name and even though many became martyrs in your church so um, for god's sake you did not bow down to worship them i mean so they were insisting the people and especially uh, the gov governors and the government were uh, i mean uh, insisting uh, those people to worship the idols and also worship the caesar but these people said we are not ready to worship any caesar or any human being or any idol because we have the living god we will be worshiping that god only and we know the name of jesus and we are worshiping the name of jesus so they were holding fast the name of god and name of jesus and some of them were I mean, becoming martyrs in the in the, in 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 that church itself i mean for god's sake so that's the reason that uh, i mean god is appreciating the church at pergamos that i know you hold fast my name in the midst of the persecution and in the midst of the i mean other problems now we will go to the third i mean point third uh, i mean uh, appreciation is i know you did not renounce your faith i know you did not renounce your faith i know you did not renounce your faith <clears throat> that also is from uh, uh, chapter 2 verse 13 so listen here is the appreciation to the church at pergamos and says even in the midst of testing of their faith they did not renounce their faith we are coming to that point you know so this is very interesting to know and we have to think about what happened on those days and how these people were standing firm in faith and also they did not renounce their faith in jesus christ they did not renounce their faith in jesus christ you know this is a kind of appreciation for the church at pergamos you know even in the midst of the testing of their faith what do you mean by the testing of the faith testing of the faith means you know when they are going through the i mean i mean uh, 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 troubles and when they were, they were going through the tribulation and uh, the persecution i mean uh, the, those people were i mean and testing their faith whether they will uh, believe in jesus only or they will i mean uh, worship the idols or worship the caesar or other emperors or governors but these people were just standing and and they were i mean not able to and they were not willing to renounce their faith they had a faith in jesus christ and they were following jesus christ and they were gathering together always and uh, they were uh, very much interested to I mean gather together and praise the name of the lord and also praying together and uh, i mean i mean uh, breaking the bread and everything they were doing all those things that we understand from uh, when you read acts chapters 1 2 and 3 you know those people were gathering together and having that fellowship together you know that is what we understand from that point but the the reason is you know even in the midst of those problems these people were not ready to renounce their faith renounce their faith hallelujah so let me let me give you an example uh, from uh, i mean uh, uh, bible that is hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 hebrews chapter 12 verse 1 we will read that verse therefore since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witness let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us so the first sentence is very interesting what is that therefore since we have a so great a cloud of witness surrounding us amen what is that we are surrounded by a so great cloud of cloud of witness saatchigalude itra valiya samuham namukku chuttum nilkunu amen so we are surrounded by 
a so great cloud of witness. But when we go to Hebrews chapter 11, this is Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. When we go to Hebrews chapter 11, that chapter 11 speaks about many faith warriors, many faith warriors. That means even though they were going through the turmoil and persecution, they stood firm for faith. That was the situation of those days. You know, in chapter 11, it says, says about, I mean, how those people were standing firm in faith. They were not ready to renounce their faith. They were always, I mean, speaking about the faith in Jesus Christ and they were standing firm for the Jesus Christ and standing firm for the faith of Jesus Christ. You know, so that is the reason that those people are known as the faith warriors. Vishwasa Veeranmar. They were faith warriors. They were known as the faith warriors. And in, in chapter 12, it says that, you know, you don't be worried about anything because even though you are going through the, I mean, persecution or troubles or struggles, nothing to be worried about because you have a group of people, huge number of people standing around us. I mean, that is just like a cloud of witness, just like a cloud of witness surrounding us. So nothing to be worried about that because they already completed their course and all those witnesses, they already I mean, I mean a witness to Jesus Christ and they, they had many persecutions and they, they died and they went to Jesus Christ. I mean, so that is the I mean, assurance that we have. But today, regarding our time and our generation, Jesus is asking a question in, in, in Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Luke chapter 18, verse 8. We will read that verse. I tell you, he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? So this is the question that God is asking to the people who are living in this generation. You know, what was the, I mean, what was the God's encouragement? What was the God's, uh, I mean, uh, uh, assurance about the people of God in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, and two, I mean, chapter 11? What was that? I mean, he was saying that, okay, you have many people already, they, they, they finished their course and you have their, I mean, those people as a witness and surrounding you. I mean, you are surrounded by a great cloud of witness. But now, this is the question about the present generation and the, and the people, those who are living in this day. Okay, so what, what is the question? When the son of man comes, will he find faith on earth? What is the meaning of that question? And why Jesus is asking like this? And why Jesus is asking this question? You know, in the, in the, in the earlier time, in the ancient time, when those people, maybe, maybe first century or second century, or when they, the, the people of God, when the believers and when pastors and leader, leaders were going through the, I mean, I mean, difficult situation and turmoil and persecution and all those problems, they were standing firm. They were not ready to renounce their faith. I mean, so they were just believing that, I mean, Jesus Christ is with us and the presence of God is with us and there is nothing to be worried about. But now, Jesus is asking during the time of Jesus, while Jesus was on the earth from the public ministry, Jesus is asking a question, and he is having even he is having a he having a doubt that I mean, what is that? I mean, when the Son of Man comes, that means the the return of Jesus Christ, the second coming of Jesus Christ. When the Son of Man is coming, will he find faith on earth? What is the meaning of that? Now we don't have any persecution or any struggle frankly speaking, and everything is fine with us. No problems, no issues. You know, some kinds of issues are there. At the same time, we are not, I mean, uh, persecuted and we, we people are not having any persecution or struggle or turmoil because of the name of Jesus Christ. We are happy and happily we are worshiping God and praying. Okay, we are always worshiping and we are gathering together. Uh, maybe in the corona issues, this time and particular time, we are not able to gather together. But still, we are having many meetings and many prayer meetings. And we are, I mean, through Zoom, we are worshiping God. And we have many chances and opportunities. We are everything. We have everything. And we are comfortable here. Amen. So what happened when we are not checking our faith? 
you know there is no test of faith in our life now that is the main problem that's the main problem we don't have any test of faith when the test of faith comes വിശ്വാസത്തെ പരീക്ഷിക്കുന്ന ഒരു അനുഭവം ഉണ്ടാകുമ്പോഴാണ് നമ്മൾ എത്രത്തോളം വിശ്വസ്തരാണെന്നും നമ്മൾ എത്രത്തോളം ദൈവസന്നിധിയിൽ നല്ലവരായി ജീവിക്കാൻ നമുക്ക് കഴിയുന്നുണ്ടെന്നും നമുക്കറിയാൻ കഴിയുന്നത് സോ വാട്ട് ഈസ് ഹാപ്പനിങ് നോ ദർ ഇസ് നോട്ട് ചെക്കിംഗ് ദർ ഇസ് നോട്ട് ടെസ്റ്റിംഗ് ഫോർ അവർ ഫേത്ത് ഐ മീൻ വെദർ വി ലൂസ് ഇറ്റ് ഓൾ ഇൻക്രീസ് ഇറ്റ് വി ഹാവ് ദ ഫേത്ത് ബട്ട് ടു അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് ടു റിയലൈസ് വെദർ ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് ലൂസിംഗ് ഓർ ഇൻക്രീസിംഗ് വി ഷുഡ് ഹാവ് ദ ടെസ്റ്റ് ഓഫ് ഫേത്ത് I mean, so we can test the faith and we can test, I mean, our Christian life, the, 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 the level of the spiritual life of our personal life. I mean, what is that? I mean, whether I have the faith in Jesus Christ, I mean, when I was, I mean, coming to Jesus Christ and accepting Jesus Christ, or still I'm having that, or I, can, I, can I increase that faith in my life? And actually, you know, I have been listening to a pastor uh, recently, uh the other day from from india he was uh, I mean, speaking from uh bihar he was speaking from bihar and he says something there are various persecutions and pastors are not able to go outside and uh, share the gospel because of the corona issues and also for the persecution there are many people are persecuted and many churches are persecuted you know those people are just having many things to say you know the pastors are not allowed to i mean i go outside in in north indian side even in karnataka also okay you know these people are just i mean i mean a uh, hindrance uh, they're standing as a hindrance and they're saying you should not come out of your house or church and should not speak anything about the gospel of jesus christ so those people are going through the persecution but that pastor was saying one thing even in the midst of that persecution even in the midst of the corona i mean issues and everything thousands and thousands of people are believing in Jesus Christ and they are taking baptism this is very interesting you know when i was listening that message i was so happy and i praised the name of the lord and let us think about what is my part and what is my role in gospelization or what is my role in doing something for the name of the lord you know even though they are going through the persecution even though there are many oppositions even though there are many i mean i mean i mean beating and problems and destroying the church and the church materials and everything but still still there are many people coming to christ and i mean from their house itself they are believing in jesus christ and they are i mean trying to follow jesus and taking baptism and all those things so just remember one thing the believers of i mean pergamos i mean pergamos church did not renounce their faith even though they were going through the persecution in their life so in revelation chapter 2 verse 13 it is it is very clearly written right even during the time of martyrdom of antipas a, a special i mean particular name is written there i know where you dwell where satan's throne is and you hold fast my name and did not deny my faith even in the days of antipas even in the days of antipas what is that you know who was antipas who was antipas it is written there few things are there what is that he was one of the okay it is not written there he was one of the ministers of uh, uh, pergamos church the history says that he was one of the ministers of uh, pergamos church and also he was a faithful person he was a faithful person and also he was a martyr for christ who was antipas he was one of the ministers of pergamos church and he was a faithful person and he was a martyr for jesus christ amen so uh, history says uh, uh, about the martyrdom of antipas so uh, nothing is uh, explained about uh, the martyrdom of antipas in uh, uh, this uh, i mean uh, this portion and even uh, any other portions but the historical uh, i mean uh, it means that the scholars i mean uh, who knows about the history they says that the martyrdom of antipas uh, uh, took place during the time of emperor domitian so during the time of emperor uh, emperor domitian uh, the martyrdom of antipas took place and uh, uh, the order of domitian to antipas was that you have to renounce the name of jesus and worship caesar as your god you have to renounce your jesus or the name of jesus and you have to worship caesar 
as your God. So he replied, Antipas replied, I won't do that. I won't do that. Then they put him in the fiery burner and burned and fried him alive. That is the history says, you know, these people, you know, um, the, 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 the emperor Domitian and the government, they were saying that, okay, you have to renounce your name. You, ha you have to renounce the name of Jesus and you have to worship Caesar. You have to worship Caesar. And he said, I won't do that because I am believing in Jesus Christ. And I know that Jesus Christ will deliver me. And that, because on, of that reason, they put him in the fiery burner. And they were just warning him. And I mean, it, 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 is, it is said that, okay, they were just fried him, fry him, okay, live. Okay, so that, is, that was the persecution. That was the struggles that Antipas was going through. Even in that situation, he did not renounce his faith. Even in that situation, he did not renounce his faith. So these are the appreciations of, for the church at Pergamos. And these things are there. Especially, you know, in verse 13 says that, I mean, uh, you uh, hold fast my name and did not deny my faith even in the days of Antipas. Even in the days of Antipas, my witness, my faithful one who was killed among you where Satan dwells. So these are the specialities of that city. The Satan was staying there. The Satan was dwelling there. So uh, the, the, the city of Pergamos was a, a center of Satan or satanic worship and idol worship. And uh, the, the temples are there, the especially the temple of Zeus, God. You know, all these things were happening there and persecutions were there. The, the government was, I mean, uh, I mean, insisting those people and Christians to, I mean, worship the emperors or Caesar and all those things. At the same time, I mean, even Antipas, one of the leader and one of the minister of, uh, I mean, but, I mean uh, Pergamos church, he was I mean, killed and he was becoming a martyr for Jesus Christ. Even in the midst of that, these people were standing firm. You know, it is very interesting that, you know, uh, when a person from, from our church, if, if it, is, it is happening for the pastor or if it is happening for a believer, then the other people also, the other believers also will go away from that church and they will say, no, 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 we are not ready for the worship and we are not coming to that church because, I mean, uh, the persecution is happening in your church, so we are not coming there. But in this situation, in situation, you know, when the Antipas was killed and Antipas was born, you know, in those situation also, those people were just standing firm and they were not ready to renounce the name of Jesus Christ. That is what we understand from there. And these are the appreciations that God is giving for the church at Pergamos. I mean, so now uh, that is the end of the, I mean, appreciations. And the second point is, um, the second point is actually uh, point number B, weak points, weak points. Weak points. Weak points are in uh, uh, verses 14 and 15. <clears throat> Chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Um, we will read that portion. No, we will that, read that verses. Anybody can read that. 14 and 15. Yeah. But I have a few things against you. You have some who hold the teaching of Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of Israel so that they might that, that so that they so that they might eat food and sacrifice to idols and practice sexual immorality so also you have some who hold the teaching of Nicol Nicolaitan oh, yeah enough enough thank you so listen you know uh, this is a speciality of God's messages now, whenever God is giving a message for the church or a believer or a pastor, I mean, all of a sudden, he is, uh, I mean, appreciating them for something, appreciating them for something. At the same time, he is trying to, I mean, mention the weak points of that church, the weak points of that church. It is very interesting and it is very important. 
we must be very serious about these things you know when we are getting the appreciation most of the time we are so happy we are so happy we are saying praise the lord and god was appreciating me and god was giving me appreciation and the pastor was appreciating me the believers were uh, uh, appreciating me that is good at the same time whenever the bible says or the god says something about the weak points of the church the weak points of every believer we must be very careful about that you know there are mainly two weak points mentioned about the pergamos church two weak points are there mainly about the the pergamos church the first one is i mean uh, the first one is there are some people follow the doctrine of bala okay that is there in uh, uh, verse 14 there were some people following the doctrine of bala the doctrine of bala it is there in the four, i mean uh, 14th verse some people were following the doctrine of bala what was the doctrine of that bala we'll be uh, discussing about uh, the doctrines and everything in the next class but let me just tell you that from the 14th verse what is that who kept teaching balak to put a stumbling block before the sons of israel we will go to that history in the in the in the in the next class and to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit acts of immorality that is the teaching or the doctrine of bala that is in 14th verse and the second teaching is there are some people follow the doctrine of nicolaitans okay some people are following the doctrine of nicolaitans we already i mean studied about the uh, teachings and doctrines of nicolaitans once uh, when we were uh, studying about the church at ephesus church at ephesus i think you remember that okay so now these are the two uh, main weak points that uh, uh, jesus is mentioning about the church at uh, 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 pergamos and we will be uh, studying about all those things in the next class and you have to think about one thing that this church is a compromising church okay we are we are going to i mean speak about that in the next class okay so this church the pergamos church is a compromising church compromising with all the i mean politics and all the other religions and all the i mean social uh, things and uh, other rituals and worship services everything okay so that is what we are going to learn in the next class and we are going to uh, close this class today and uh, after the prayer after the prayer i mean uh, we will have uh, a few minutes to i mean discuss anything any doubt or any question from this portions this portion